Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking AFL 23 again, and we're actually gonna be talking about the career mode, the management career mode uh, that we are very heavily anticipating. I've done career modes in the last couple of games, uh, but this one I'm very excited about. So I wanna to today go through some of the things that I discovered by having a look at the game while down at Big Ant the other day. I was really limited on time, so I don't get to look through probably everything, but we get a pretty decent gist of what we're gonna do. So let's select a team. We're gonna go with the Giants and we're gonna look through some of the stats and features and things that we can look at. So the first thing here you'll notice is the settings. There's a few different things here. Uh, contract negotiations are one of them. Uh, obviously the harder difficulty, the higher salaries that players will desire, uh, depending on if you are negotiating your contract. Similar sort of a thing with a trade. If you are make, want your trades to be really hard, you set that at a higher difficulty and you're gonna have to give up a lot to get uh, some good players back. Whereas if it's on easier, you might be able to, you know, get a first round pick for a decent level player rather than spending two or three. Um, and you can turn a salary cap on or off as well. So if you really wanted to just be like a really overpowered team, you chuck all your negotiation stuff on easy, turn the salary cap off, Bob's your uncle, you're gonna have unlimitedly good players as well. Next thing is the match quarter length. Uh, which you can select, I think, four or five of these. I went for three and a half minutes, so that's what my simulated data is going to be off. But if you did select full match length, um, that's obviously 20 minutes for AFL, 15 minutes for AFL women's if you are doing an AFL women's career mode. And of course, you can turn injuries on or off. Let's go through to what it looks like. Uh, so this is sort of your base, home base screen here. Uh, obviously, we are GWS. We've got our preseason game. Uh, down below the next match that is upcoming, you can see the key stats uh, that are going to be displayed throughout the season. That will be, you know, the top goal scorers, the leading disposal winners, and things like that. But a lot of this is empty right now. So I'm going to like move ahead in time. Uh, we'll simulate through a few games as well and see how we go. So, so we're up to match day now. Uh, we need to select our lineup. Now you can either do that manually yourself, which is what we're gonna do here, or you can just have an automatic uh, lineup there as well. So you can see here sort of the roles. You've got your captain, rock, second rock, uh, kick out uh, that you can add to there. You've also got all your bench and reserves players on the left. And there's also this preset lineup feature, which I didn't actually ask about on the right hand side. This is something that is actually slightly different to when you're picking a lineup for a single match uh, for your career. I'm guessing you can have a few of these, but I'm not too sure uh, whether you can have multiple preset lineups and you know you could have it where you're playing three tools might be one preset that you're looking to towards or one where you've got a lot of small forwards or something like that. Um, and I guess you can name that as well. So there's possibly you can have multiple of these as you pick your team for each week. Also on the right hand side, you can see how many players you have out of your maximum list size of 52 and how many are injured, suspended and the morale of the players in your team as well. And then also on the left, you can see like the season average and career stats uh, of those players. Now, I don't know if that's the career that you're playing and the season you're playing, but I imagine it would be rather than like, you know, their real life stats. So, you know, you never know. Anyway, uh, let's go to the next thing. So we're gonna go list management. Have a look at this. We've got player contracts, it's like our first one. So let's have a quick look here at uh, a big list of GWS players. Their salaries, I'm guessing, are just generated by their player rating rather than what their actual estimated salaries are. And you'll also notice here that we actually have rookies, um, which I'm guessing are gonna be paid, obviously, a bit less with a higher rating. You can see Jacob Ware there is a category A rookie as a midfielder and uh, he's 82 rated, which is the same as uh, Angwin there, who is not, uh, 71 rated, but he's actually paid a bit less because he's a rookie. Um, and we'll go into this a little bit more detail later because you will be able to do the uh, national draft, the mid-season draft, and the rookie draft in this career mode. Um, and I, I don't think you can negotiate these contracts through the season, but I didn't really look into that into too much depth. Um, so you can see, I guess, when your players are contracted to, there'll obviously be a lot of work to go in. And I, I don't know also whether these contracts are, they're like real contracts, but it looks like they are based off some of the numbers here. Like you can see, Cornelio Green and Whitfield have long-term deals. I'm guessing that's reflective of their real life contract status, um, which is just another like little element to add in there that you are gonna see, I guess if your players in real life for your teams, have these long-term contracts when you start your career mode, like that you're obviously not gonna have to need to negotiate with them like you would 
other players as well. Also, definitely try and lock in those long-term deals why you, why you guys aren't like super high rated because otherwise they're going to cost you a lot. Uh, and this is what I'm talking about here with this mid-season draft, national draft, rookie draft. This screen you can come to at any point in the season and you'll actually be able to revisit what you did during those drafts. This next screen is the watch list. Um, I don't know what this is because I didn't ask anything about it, but I'm assuming you can put players on here either from other clubs in the AFL or possibly in the state leagues as well for players you want to draft. Think about drafting uh, or recruiting to your team so you get an understanding of what their stats have been through the season and you can then decide whether or not you want to take them, I guess, later on in the year. So it's a good way, I think, to stat track those players that you are looking to recruit. Um, but that is just a guess because I literally don't have anything in there at the moment. Similar sort of thing here with trade offers. Uh, the trade period's currently closed because we're in the beginning of the season. But once you're at the end of the season, uh, you're going to get some trade offers from other clubs as well as being able to make your own offers as well. So that's where that will play out in this particular screen here um, where you're trying to trade for other players. I don't know, maybe your watch list, you can select players from there and you can go, hey, I want to make a trade for this guy. Great. Anyway, we'll, we'll see how that all plays out once we get to an end of a season. And then just quickly, I wanted to go through the calendar for events. It's really nothing too different to the fixture, except it does show those key moments, like I guess the trade period maybe opening and closing. Um, and it also has the dates of the draft. So you can see there on Wednesday, May 31st, is the mid-season draft logo. So once we get to that, which we're actually gonna simulate through to that point, um, we'll be able to do the mid-season draft and I can show you guys a little bit about how that works as well. Now this next bit, I'm actually gonna play really slow. So if it does look framey, that's why. Uh, I'm gonna simulate through a match and then go through sort of the end screen for like the stats and things like that. So you can have a look at how your scorecard and stats and things are gonna look. Obviously I didn't have this in the previous video for the gameplay stuff. Um, I think the reason was just the build we were playing on did not have that included on it, but I'm assuming that will obviously play through when you are doing a single match. So you've got your match summary on page one with the worm and things. Uh, you've got your match stats on uh, page two, which is uh, more the team based stats there. So there's a lot that you can go down and, and have a look through. And then on the third tab, you actually have the like best players on the ground gives you an indication of your leading ball winners and your like leading goal kickers as well and then of course like in the middle there you've got that little breakdown of carton one by seven it was at icon park etc and this is sort of how it played out so that's generally how you're going to see a lot of these uh, simulations go we are on three and a half minute quarters that is the stats that it is trying to replicate for if you did play on like full length or a longer length quarter you would probably get more accurate stats to the real world rather than a really shortened version of the game so um, as we begin to play through and simulate some of these games you're going to see some data begin to pop up and appear in the in the middle of our screen now i'm not sure if the stats that are shown in the middle of the screen there are like the per round stats or if they're supposed to be like a summation of what's going on in the season uh because they seem to change every single week and their like top stat versus their bottom stat also seem to change so it's a little bit confusing from that point of view uh maybe that is something that will change between now and final build in terms of what it actually displays um i think it is displaying what it is like the keys from the round, like the biggest stats from that particular round. Um, so just to give you a bit of a summation of that. And then if you want the more in-depth statistics, you can actually go to the statistics screen, which will show you a more season-based uh, level of stats. Because I can't imagine, you know, one goal being kicked. We've already seen two goals being kicked before and that you know one goal is just maybe I guess the round highlights so far uh, and you can also see the ladder start to populate on the right uh, as we've got all these stats and you can see the best uh, of five games we've only won one of our last five through our simulations um, and here's that stat screen I was talking about as well so you've got three different stats screens here you've got the overview which gives you most of your basic stats that you'd be looking at you've got the disposals which gives you some more and then you've got the possessions which also gives you some more stats as well so I'll just flick through these really quick and then we'll get out of this and go back into the game so we're just gonna simulate this last game here where we lose to Geelong at the death unfortunately uh, which means we are actually sitting 17th 
come the time of the mid-season draft, uh, which means we're gonna actually have the second pick of the draft. West Coast taking Quinton Narkle, who is a midfield line breaker based on his archetype. And you can see, we're gonna stop this screen here. Uh, there is a number of players. These are all sort of like the free agents that are listed in the game based off, I guess, who played footy last year. Um, I'm not sure whether this is going to be the case come the final version of the game or if this is just going to be populated with VFL, Sanford, Waffle, Nifl players. Well, actually, that doesn't exist anymore because it's just the VFL these days. Um, but all of those players will probably be in the game. Will it be in career mode? I'm not too sure. But uh, based off the people who I have spoken to, this is not an official answer um, because these people are like footy players, you know, like people who are in the VFL. Um, etc. have had to sign deals to have their likeness and things in the game. So it looks like we are going to have official players with generic level licensing, uh, sorry, likenesses for those leagues. Um, and I believe the same is for the women's as well. Uh, talking to a couple of SANFL W players over in South Australia for Gather Round, and they were saying, yeah, that they uh, had to sign a, a thing to be in AFL 23 as well. So if the men's and women's are going to replicate that, then they're probably the type of players you're going to want to be taking in uh, the mid-season draft as well as in your rookie draft after the national draft where you get all those, you know, generated players from the under-18s, which you never know. Maybe in this version, we might get some of those under-18s players in there already. I don't think so, but you never know. Could you take Harley Reid to pick one at the end of your career mode? I think there is more of a chance than ever that that is going to be a possibility if we get that far. So these are the things in the draft pool, obviously that you're looking at, lots of familiar names in there. You've got potential overall, it's actually giving you a few suggested players as well that you could be taking. Uh, and it also has like their age and their archetype, which I'm not sure how that plays into their, into the game specifically, but it might just mean, hey, this is the type of player you should play them in this area because this is something that their, st their stats suggest they're really good at. So hopefully that screen gives you a bit of insight um, and hopefully I've explained it as best as I can. So that is pretty much it in terms of uh, breaking down a lot of the stuff uh, that has been you know, added or included in this career mode. I obviously didn't go through a game, so I didn't know any uh, specific commentary or cutscenes or anything to do with that. Um, but this is just sort of a first look, a bit of a preview of what you can expect to see when AFL 23 comes out on Thursday this week. So I'm gonna leave it there, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy today's video. And uh, until till next time, I'll see you later, but make sure you subscribe because I'm gonna be doing a brand new career mode once this does come out uh, and it's gonna be exciting. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. I've got plenty of fun things planned for it. And uh, yeah, can't wait. So I'll see you then. Enjoy.